Will the Canadian Startup Visa Program give you a 100% guaranteed permanent residency for Canada? Better question yet, is anything in life guaranteed 100%? Okay, today we're gonna do a deep dive into this question and expect nothing less than the exposed truth just like the rest of us. Quick introduction, who am I? I'm Reza from Inuit Canada, licensed immigration practitioner. Is this what I do for a living? No, I'm not an actual full-time YouTuber, although some may claim so, but I work hands-on with the licensed team working on actual applications and communicating with the immigration department and overseas embassies on a daily basis, communicating on behalf of our clients. Why are we posting this video? These are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge with a worldwide audience. If you think about immigrating, we're here to help. Get a free email assessment for eligible applicants by filling out the form down below. And of course, if you're an active immigration practitioner, we can assist. We are a global mobility solution provider. So, although the program is not 100% PR guaranteed, the startup visa program right now is hovering around 75% approval rate. I will let you know why there's 25% of startups which fail. Here's the top reasons in terms of the Canadian permanent residency application under the startup visa program. Essential co-founders withdraw from the group. For personal or professional reasons, co-founders will decide not to immigrate to Canada or decide to immigrate to another country due to reasons such as processing times and uncertainties with the Canadian startup visa. Essential co-founders are refused due to misrepresentation or ineligibility. In many cases, they won't tell pertinent facts about their immigration history to other co-founders or even their legal representatives. Sometimes essential co-founders can be reviewed based on eligibility criteria medical, criminal admissibility, and settlement funds. Essential co-founders apply for another Canadian PR program and by default are withdrawn from the start of visa application if their other PR, maybe Express Entry, maybe PMP, maybe Family Sponsorship. So when that PR process before the start of visa application PR, they are withdrawn by default by RCC and hence the rest of the group if the co-founder is essential is refused by default, no matter what. Essential members' backgrounds and professional work experience and education do not match the startup visa concept. So you've got manager in your startup which has been in the farm industry, agriculture, and then you're doing a bunch of IT guys doing software as a service in something unrelated, maybe retail. These are things that are red flags and will put you at risk and potential risk. The startup is a group of co-founders have not done any activity or investment since they had received the life support. They have nothing to show as their true intention to operate and manage this business in Canada. They were not proactive and hence they will be on the chopping board. And the IRCC officer will mention that these are artificial transactions in order to gain immigration status. You may notice that a lot of these factors are based on other group members in your startup group, such as co-founders. Solo founders, funny enough, will have way less problems and risks in terms of startup visa challenges if they are put into a group with people they don't know. Remember, folks, we're always posting about these key details of IRCC's business program, startup visa, and other immigration solutions and potential options for professionals and entrepreneurs. And if that's what you're looking for, well, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more deep dive videos. Now, this was the ugly part of startup visa. Now let's look at the more brighter side. Which Canadian startup visa groups are accepted? Well, one, all co-founders meet the eligibility criteria such as settlement funds, language score, and admissibility, such as criminality and medical checks. All co-founders have proof of their proactive and critical role in the startup business. Number three, the startup business has made business progress in terms of product solution development, business and market development, participation at startups, at industry events such as exhibitions and conferences with your startup brand, raising money from external investment institutions, potential partners and or customers, and has clear documentation on their significant benefit for Canada, such as hiring local Canadian staff. 
The startup business has put into place key factors to move and manage the business inside Canada. This is important. This is a key indicator that many groups and consultants miss. Number five, regular reporting to IRCC and your designated organization on your progress and achieve business milestones. Now, I'm not talking about obtaining a letter of support in a business plan. I'm talking about every six months reporting to IRCC on what you've done in terms of your business, not immigration, and every quarter, if not more frequent, with your designated organization. You should be in touch regularly and pushing them to support you. In conclusion, there's two groups of startup visa applicants. Groups which know what they're doing, follow instructions, have experience in this, or somebody on their side with experience to guide them through the entire one and a half up to two year process. And then there's groups which are clueless and are at risk of being terminated by specific IRC officers. Nothing in life, folks, is 100%. Not even my internet connection or my hairstyle for the day, or what you'll eat for breakfast tomorrow or morning. How can anyone in this world guarantee 100% approval for any immigration program? What I can guarantee you is that 100% of startup visa applicants believe they will be approved for their IRCC permanent residency, but some will be disappointed and some will be successful. Who's supporting your startup visa application? And in which group will you follow? If you're thinking about immigrating, whether permanently or temporarily, you're at the right place. We just don't offer immigration. We offer solutions. I can guarantee only one point. You'll know what to expect. The entire process clearly laid out for you. And all the risks identified, including costs. Our legal agreements are based on payment milestones, which are linked directly to application progression. We do not take 100% advance payment for business immigration applicants. We have a million dollar liability insurance which protects you and us from fraud or mistakes, as well as a dedicated client trust account with our communities. Our team speaks over nine languages and we've helped applicants from 50 different countries. And I'm not kidding. Click the link below this video and get a free email assessment for eligible applicants.